good evening sir and good evening all so we are discussing uh, the case law <clears throat> vinu bhai hari bhai walavi and others versus the state of gujarat and another uh, here uh, as stated earlier the instant case stemmed from an fir that was registered on 22 12 2009 by nidin bhai the power of attorney holder of raman bhai and uh, shankar bhai they both live in uh, uk usa as a legal in fir and the fir alleges that Raman Bhai and Shankar Bhai are owners of the land of uh, 8296 square meter which is located on the outskirts of uh, Surat and they bought the land from one Bikki Bhai and uh, his wife uh, Bikki Ben in 1975 and it was alleged in FIR that the legal heirs of Bikha Bhai and Vanu Bhai together have hatched a conspiracy due to a uh, price hike of land in Surat and a notice published in Gujarat newspaper a notice published in gujarat newspaper on 7 6 and henceforth a uh, dispute arose and uh, minu bhai demanded rupees uh, 2.5 crores uh, to resolve and settle disputes concerning the land and also as per the facts it was said that apart from extortion money from uh, nidin bhai to settle the dispute regarding land legal hires of vika bhai and bikki ben along with minu bhai and manu bhai have used a forged and bogus uh, sadaqat and power of attorney in respect of uh, the disputed land and accused had tried to snatch the land from its lawful owners demand bhai and his uh, shankar bhai so uh, here the uh, issues considered very important is that uh, whether magistrate has the power to order a further investigation further investigation after filing of charge sheet by police and if yes at the what stage of criminal proceedings and the second one is that uh, whether the magistrate is authorized under section 173 clause 8 to order a further investigation after a police report has been forwarded to him <clears throat> and here the rules uh, and principles applicable are section 156 clause 3 of criminal procedure code Uh, that is police officers power to investigate cognizable co case and section 173 clause 8 crpc power of the in magistrate to order further investigation and section 202 clause 1 crpc that is power to direct investigation section 190 crpc cognizance of offenses by magistrate and section 2 clause h crpc that is interpretation of the definition of investigation and here in the judgment the honorable apex court uh, set aside the impugned judgment of high court and held that magistrate can exercise his power under section 156 clause 3 of crpc even at post cognizance stage therefore magistrate has the authority to order further investigation into an offense prior to the inspection of trial as uh, provided for in section 173 clause 8 read in conjunction with section 156 clause 3 and section 2 clause h of the criminal procedure code the court held that a magistrate has his right to order further investigation even after taking cognizance of a charge sheet filed by the police before the inspection of the trial and the three judge bench after a rigorous deliberation of precedents and statutory framework of crpc and uh, relying heavily on the principle of right to fair trial as in accordance with article 21 of our constitution of india pronounced their decision and to hold otherwise would be uh, contrary to the spirit of the criminal procedure code itself and it would be beneficial to interpret section 156 uh, to include the powers to be exercised by the magistrate during the pre cognizance stage as the honorable court has exhaustively reasoned uh, the magistrate's authority to order further investigation should be read into section 173 clause 8 of the court and it is also necessary because appealing the orders to the higher courts would only add to the burden of the courts also to uphold the spirit of the criminal procedure code it needs to be ensured that the magistrate's supervisory jurisdiction is widespread and the bench traced the power of the magistrate to order further investigation to section 156 clause 1 read with section 156 clause 3 and section 173 clause 8 read with section 2 clause h and it held that since the definition of investigation includes all proceedings under the code for the collection of evidence conducted by a police officer it would include the proceedings under uh, section 173 clause 8 as well and the court uh, then traced the power of the magistrate the order investigation to order investigation back to section 156 clause 3 and section 190 here in this uh, the honorable bench relied heavily on article 21 and is uh, hovering omnipresence over the court which should be uh, the guiding principle of all its provisions and to ensure a just and fair trial so the decision to hold the magistrate empowered or such a uh, supervisory jurisdiction 
is in line with the suicides of Article 21 of our Constitution of India. It's also to ensure a just and fair investigation and uh, the uh, scheme of the court itself. And it is also uh, stated in the case itself that it is clear that a fair trial must kick off only after an investigation is itself fair and just. And the ultimate aim of all investigation and inquiry, whether by the police or by the magistrate, is to ensure that those who have actually committed a crime are correctly booked and those who have not are not arraigned to stand trial. That this is the minimal procedure requirement, that is a fundamental requirement of Article 21 of the Constitution of India and cannot be doubted. It is the hovering omnipresence of Article 21 over the CRPC that must needs inform the interpretation of all provisions of the CRPC so as to ensure that Article 21 is followed both in letter and in spirit. So, so I'd like to start off by mentioning a few other cases. Now, firstly, in the case of Kishan Lal versus Dharmendra Bhafna, the court held that a magistrate can order further investigation even after taking cognizance. But the exact opposite was held in the case of Amrut Bhai, Sambu Bhai, Patel versus Suman Bhai, Kandi Bhai, Patel, that after taking cognizance, an order of further investigation cannot be passed by the magistrate. However, the above two cases came in conflict with each other, and neither of them prevailed because both of them were a a two judge bench decision and so the matter was referred to the three judge bench uh, decision in the case of Vinubai, Haribai, Malviya versus state of Gujarat. So it is held that a fair trial is a dimension of right to life and personal liberty under article 21 and thus an investigating officer should collect all the evidence to find the real truth and to serve the ends of justice and therefore even after filing the police report, if there is a chance of collection of more evidence, then the investigation uh, shall continue with the investigation uh, taking the path of collecting those evidences. And if he does not do so, then the magistrate has to power uh, an order such as further investigation in the interest of justice. The court held that Article 21 is always omnipresent and CRPC shall be int uh, interpreted in the light of Article 21. Uh, so there are two issues that were raised in the above mentioned case, which is uh, whether the magistrate can order further investigation after taking cognizance, and if the magistrate can order further investigation after taking cognizance, then under which provision will he order further investigation? That is whether under Section 156, Clause 3, 173, Clause 8, or will the magistrate use its ancillary power? And so the court held that under section 173, clause 8, uh, re read with uh, section 2, clause H, our uh, magistrate exercising its ancillary power can order further investigation after taking cognizance. But the issue that crept uh, into the moment was that the court made a sweeping remark that section 156, clause 3, uh, also the uh, magistrate can go order the further investigation after taking cognizance because until now the law on point was that section 156 clause 3 is a pre-cognizance order and once the court has taken cognizance it cannot revert back to uh, 156 clause 3 as per the decision that was laid down under uh, devra palli lakshmi narayana reddy versus v narayana reddy and others this case related uh, to a complaint case where the issue was that in a complaint case once cognizance is taken under section 190 clause 1 uh, a and in an investigation can be ordered under section 202 clause 1 then what is the need of section 156 clause 3 and then the court in case held that section 156 clause 3 is a precognizance order and 202 Clause 1 is a precognizance order. The purpose of section 156 clause 3 is basically to initiate the investigation and to uh, and to put forward the lodging of FIR. And section 202 clause 1 is to assist the court so that the court decides whether it will be it will order the issue of process or dismiss the complaint. Section 156 clause 3 order cannot be passed after taking cognizance. Now the problem that I found was that how can Vinubai judgment overrule uh, Devra Pali judgment when both of them were three judge uh, bench decisions? 
and uh, Vinubai's judgment was also criticized on the point that if an investigation can be ordered under section 156 clause 3 after cognizance is taken then it makes section 202 uh, clause 1 uh, quite a bit redundant and unnecessary so as a conclusion i would like to state that my analysis is in venue by judgment it has not been clarified whether the judgment will be limited to only police report cases or it will apply also to complaint or information cases in the latter case uh, which is the uh, in the complaint or in information cases the problem that will arise is that if there is no original police report then how can there be an order of further investigation and even if without police order an order of further investigation was passed then what will happen when supplementary report on such an order is filed uh, so uh, will it result in the magistrate taking the second cognizance in the same case uh, or will it just uh, you know information case and uh, uh, which is that the second cognizance or complaint uh, or information case and second cognizance on the police report so that would be improper and absurd uh, in my opinion and in the light of the above anomalies and conflicts i would like to state that between the Vinuba and Devrapalli judgment, it is, uh, you know, it is suggested that the Vinuba judgment is limited to only police cases. However, the Devrapalli judgment can uh, uh, can only be considered to be limited to complaint cases. So that's that is my analysis of a few cases which I found. Thank you.